Hello guys and welcome back to the Isle of Wight. I hope you're all well and you're looking forward to this very special episode of the Isle of Wight. Before we get into that, firstly a huge thank you to all the support and of course the competitors on the most recent village build off. Congratulations to WJ Koopman. Fantastic build, fantastic builds in general and it's a really cool concept to pull off and uh, I'm hoping based on your comments that you'd like to see something like that again so we um, will certainly think about that. Anyway, last episode we worked on the rocket test site over by the needles and this was a really fun build it just was something very different to build on you know i'm not i'm not used to doing builds outside of just houses etc this is a very unique build and something that i was always looking forward to doing and i think it pulled off pretty damn well as well but anyway i did promise you guys a very special episode today and we have it i have somehow managed to persuade prez to build something European and he is built on the island for us. So without further ado, let's jump into this. Let's have a chat with Prez and let's go through this incredible build. So I'm here now with Prez. Prez, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, hey everyone, so you might know my channel. You might not have been making City Skylines videos for about, uh, I mean, since 2016 now. Um, basically just American cities. This is the first uh, stab I've had at making any sort of European um, build whatsoever, uh, which is pretty interesting, but I've just got various American cities that I've made on my channel that are ongoing, um, and I generally detail a decent amount, but definitely not to the degree that you'll see in these cinematics. Yes, excellent. Um, I'm quite proud as well <laughs> in terms of getting you to, well, being the first person to get you to do a European build. I know it's been screaming out certainly on my channel when I was talking about these guest builds and I, I imagine on your channel a lot of people have been asking you if you're going to be venturing out into European um, seas as well. Yeah. Excellent. So firstly, um, I mean, based on this guest series, I always give the guest builder the opportunity to pick where they want to build and whether they want to do a recreation or a sort of influenced um, base build. Where did you pick, Press, and, and what was the reasons for that? So first I just went on to Google Maps, not Google Earth unfortunately, because there's no Google Earth for uh, Isle of Wight, which is pretty unfortunate, but mm. um, I was I was like, okay, I've never built anything in this theme whatsoever. I, I figure I'm gonna just try to go for the most basic sort of build I can go for. So I found a little village called Newbridge uh, on Isle of Wight around the center of the island, a little bit towards the west. And I actually built on a plot that happened to, just sort of by coincidence, I was going to build anywhere, but it looked like there was a good plot uh, around that exact location on the map itself. Um, mm -hmm. So I didn't necessarily recreate New Bridge or anything, I just sort of went with a similar road layout and feel in a, in a couple of areas, but it ended up being completely different. Excellent. And was there... I mean, I've not ventured out into doing anything um, outside of Europe. I mean, was there a big change in the way you build in terms of your inspiration and the way you put things down? Um, not really. Like, you could see maybe with different houses, you could see a similar sort of detailing style that I would use if I was building an ultra-detailed, say, like, a rural lane in... Topeka, Kansas, or something. Hmm. Like, there, people might have overgrown lawns, um, there would be farms surrounding. I mean, definitely the farm style itself, with in terms of the shapes of the farms, that was probably the most British thing that I had to do. Um, like, I could have replaced the houses with American houses, and it could have been an American um, lane, maybe with a different road that doesn't have, like, a rock wall or something like that. But generally similar, farms were the main difference. Um, but yeah, like, it wasn't too different. And that was sort of the goal. I wanted to sort of ease myself into the theme. Mm, definitely, definitely. Well, like I said to you off camera, there's been a lot of people who have been asking and, well, almost crying out for you to be the next guest builder. So um, should we take a closer look at what you, you produce for us? Yeah, sure, let's go for it. Excellent. So we've got a bit of a, similar to what we've done with um, with Rick and Taze, we've got a little drive through, so to speak, with some cinematics. So what we'll do is we'll play this through now and we'll, um, we'll have a look and uh, we can talk about each sort of segment. So let's do this. So I wasn't really sure where the main entrance is to this um, area. I'm going, because it's a village, it's kind of, you can come in any direction. Yeah, basically. For, I thought we'd start off by this, this, this first little farm, um, which is a very sort of cute sort of little area. Was there any sort of influence on how you wanted to start this build off? No, I mean, so I 
for these farms, I ended up, like, this is the, one of the last farms I made. I think this is the third to last farm. I, I just basically looked at the shapes of the farms and then placed whatever farm assets I had um, from your collection down. And I just sort of explore the collection uh, of stuff you had because you had a bunch of assets that I had never really used before. Like, I hadn't used those cow spawners before. <laughs> I can imagine, yeah, because I mean, as you probably saw, that collection was quite large, but even me, looking through this build, there's a lot of things you've placed down that are in my collection that I haven't actually got around to putting down, so it's really nice to see you putting these down and, you know, give me the influence for doing those myself after as well. Yeah, there was, because like, there are a bunch of grasses that I've actually never used, like the grass in the backyard there. Mm. Um, I used a bunch of Mr. Mason's weeds assets which were awesome. I do use those in Columbia City and stuff, um, but I was able to sort of go crazy with them because this is a smaller, like less um, huge build. So the frame rate drop from this village won't be too big really, especially mm. if you're not zooming in on it. So I sort of went crazy with uh, bushes. Yes, I'll definitely, yeah, but they, they really work. And I think what I've taken from looking over this in a lot of detail is, You've kind of kept a theme with these bushes and trees, etc. But each garden looks different, which is yeah, quite, definitely. I think that's a hard thing to do. That's something I find quite difficult when I'm building a, a similar small area. It's quite hard to make it look different sometimes. Yeah, really. The main thing I was able to do was use similar bushes, but use more of them in certain areas than in others. And um, like, I added smaller details to different. Uh, lots like some people have like a bike parked in front of their house mm. um, They've got one car instead of multiple cars um, And yeah, just like once again, the main thing is just using the same assets just in different quantities Depending yes. on which house I'm building in Definitely. And I do like the fact there was a bike included. I did think myself wonder if he'd be putting down some bikes so <laughs> that's oh, yeah. really, That had to be done didn't it? <laughs> yep. But, but yeah, I think that's also, going back to your point about having sort of different number of cars and different gardens, it almost tells a story of this particular build. Like this one here, the two cars, you kind of feel that this is more of a family home. And that's what I think's like really special about when you look at other people's builds. It's kind of like you're almost trying to think of the story they had in their head when they were building. Is, I mean, is that something you ever sort of think about when you're doing your builds? Yeah, it makes it a lot easier to, to sort of build an area like the, for this house here with all the cars in front, like, this person's probably having a party of some sort. Mm. <laughs> um, yes. And yeah, they've got like a back area with a shed and totally overgrown grass. Um, but yeah, like there are a bunch of cars there that maybe they're having a party. This person's got a huge house. Um, yeah, just like lots of different things per per house for sure. Yes, yeah. And I really like the use of these stone walls. This is quite a very common thing to see in these um, rural village areas is these these um, sort of stone walls and I think they look really nice and they're all networked as well aren't they so really easy to place down yeah no because those were awesome I didn't even place those walls those were those were just on the roads themselves because um, I just used the road pack and oh yes they they worked perfectly like mm. I didn't have to detail the sides of those roads at all just everything on the interior of them I guess crazy how detailed those roads are like hmm the detail as well, and the fact they've got the speed, the um, sort of decals already in there as well. Oh, yeah. And the, the potholes, I mean, it's, it's, it's England through and through. <laughs> um, this is one thing I really liked as well. I noticed um, when I watched your, um, your time lapse that there was a, a big drop here, and I've never thought about putting rocks up against it to kind of hide that terrain difference, and I think that works really well here. Yeah, because the white cliff didn't seem to make too much sense right there. Because yes. mm -hmm. um, that's more like a coastline feature in Isle of Wight than yeah. something you'd see in the middle of the mainland. So I just covered it with rocks and bushes, and that worked pretty well. Mm. Mostly I was able to cover it with using like terraform tools so it never showed in the first place. But where I did show, I covered it up, and it looked a lot more natural that way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's, and that's something that I've had to battle with as well. I mean, I love the fact that the, I've got these white cliffs as a theme, but sometimes, even if you have a slight different drop in terrain, the white obviously sticks out like a sore thumb compared to other themes that you may be using. So that's a, a really cool way that I'm definitely going to be stealing in my future builds as well. Yeah, and then another thing I did, you can see I this person is like putting an addition on their house here uh, of some sort. And like a lot of the, the, the construction... Um, buildings are really awesome. I had a lot of fun with those. But like, just all of these buildings, I, I made sure... I actually um, didn't have, other than the thatched um, 
houses. Like, I, I, there weren't a ton of really, like, legitimately old buildings that were clearly not mass-produced. Because, like, obviously, the one thing that really characterizes the UK is tons of mass-produced homes. Mm -hmm. um, but it's all you know, it, like either directly post-war or even pre-war. So it's a lot different than what you see in the U.S. with the totally post-war subdivisions yep. in the suburbs and it's much higher density. Uh, but those are like totally mass produced. I, I wanted to make sure that this village was very organic and not like that, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Like I know there are other areas in the island that are more mass produced like that um, yep. by maybe one developer and they were all built at once. This is supposed to be very organic. These buildings are here since the 1600s, maybe even, or at least some of them. Uh, maybe the thatched roof uh, houses are more recent. Ooh, it looks like that lot, one of the houses disappeared. That sucks. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. We, we, we know it's there, really. <laughs> yeah. But even, even yeah, there, like, even if we look at that clear, that almost looks like it's just a little a little patio at the end of their garden, which is kind of almost what you could imagine being there as well. Oh, yeah, no, there, there's gardens. supposed to be a house there, but I guess that could be detailed pretty easily into just some patio on their mm. little large lot, I guess. Yeah, yeah, well, it still works. <laughs> it but, still yeah. works. I think as well, what I liked about this build is it's the fact as well, you obviously detailed these houses and gardens amazingly, but also the surrounding area. I think that's what's quite key to these villages is having something that actually looks like it's in the right place and, and what you've done really does does do that. Yeah, it was hard to work with the farm assets because they're square and yeah. they're mm -hmm. in a row and you can't necessarily just overlap them. Yes. Um, so you just have to cover the edges with bushes um, and sort of overlap them, sort of not and they glitch a little bit but it's the best you can do basically yeah I, I mean i did try and do some po there is possible to do it with po to kind of change those dynamics a little bit but sometimes certain areas they kind of flicker and, and whatnot so yeah sometimes like you say it's easier just to put down these um bushes in the old-fashioned way that we used to play it where we used to use bushes to hide the ugliness didn't we <laughs> oh i still do that that's my entire play style <laughs> Literally, my entire playstyle. Why do you think I'm building a Pacific Northwest and Northeast series? So I can hide everything with trees. <laughs> so I've just got a couple of final questions really for you, which I asked both um, Taser and Rick, and the answers are always interesting to hear. I think firstly, I'd like to know what you found the most difficult about doing this build in particular. Um, probably getting the, like, not detailing too much, because I could have gone even crazier. Mm. Um, but no, I mean, the most difficult thing in terms of like technically difficult was definitely the farms, like getting those mm -hmm. to actually look right. Um, mm -hmm. It's very hard to build farms that are not completely square or rectangular uh, in the game. Yeah, yeah. And that's, and I mean, that's one thing that I've tried to push in this series is trying to make the irregular shaped farmlands. But like you say, it's difficult with the, the resources that there are. Yeah. And um, what do you, what, I mean, out of the whole build, what is your favorite part? Um, I like some of the houses. I like that house on the on the corner of that lane that's got the shed in the back with the the meadow grass that with the path that leads to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I like all the houses, but that house is pretty special. I like it because it's just overlooking the farms. Actually, no, my favorite part overall has got to be the the farm with the cows. It's just, okay. it's just so cool. I love you, it. You did really go crazy of the cow noises, didn't you? You um. Oh, I added cow noises to my cinematics, like in post. <laughs> yeah. That's brilliant. Well, Prez, it's been an absolute honour having you build on the um, the island. It's a, an amazing job. I think everyone would agree how how well you've done. Not that we expect anything different, but it's always good to get another person's um, influence who's not from the island to build on. So thank you very much for that. It's been great having you on. Thanks so much. I had so much fun. And hopefully we'll see some other European builds in the future. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> So there we have it guys, another fantastic guest build has now been built upon the island. Prez has done an incredible job. For the first time ever of doing a European build, UK especially, this was something special and I'm really, really happy to have had him on board. If you guys want to go and see how he created this masterpiece, there's a link in the description below for his YouTube channel and the video in particular for this video. He goes through it, talks a bit about how and why he's plays and sort of things. So certainly if you enjoyed watching these cinematics, by all means go and jump over to his channel. Hit the subscribe button as well because he does some fantastic work. Certainly if you enjoy my stuff, you will certainly enjoy his. But on that note guys, that's going to bring us to the end of this special guest build. If you enjoyed the build, please hit that like button and leave your comments below and let me know what you think of Press's build. 
and who would you like to see next build on the island? If you want to build on the island yourself, you can do so now. You can download the saved game from my Patreon page, which is linked below. Other than that, see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and all the best.